In this video, we're going to take a close look at how the animator controller is used by the ultimate character controller. For this video, I'm assuming that you already have experience with the animator controller. And if you're just getting started with it, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you first take a look at Unity's resources on it and just kind of go through it just to get an idea with how it works. Uh, if you're looking for some resources, take a look at the Ultimate Character Controller documentation. I have a link to some videos that Unity has produced. I think it's under the Replacing Animations topic. So with that said, I know that the animator controller within the demo scene is, there's a, there's a lot to it. Um, there's many different states, transitions, layers, and there's just substates. And like if we look at this jump, substate, there's, there's just a lot of different transitions. And what I recommend doing for your own project is actually going to the create menu and creating a brand new animator controller. The reason I say this is because if you're using a brand new animator controller, you know exactly what's in it and you also are only including what is needed. The demo scene animator controller, it includes a lot of different use cases and most of those or a lot of those different use cases do not or will not apply to your own project. So by using your own animator controller, you are able to only get the animations that you need and it's only using the resources that you need. With that said, I know that it definitely helps having an understanding on how this animator controller works. And so that's why I'm going to go through and kind of explain what is unique about how the, the ultimate character controller uses the animator controller. When you are creating your own animator controller, I, the character controller doesn't really care what state or transition it's in. All it cares about are the parameters that are within the animator controller. And an easy way to get all those parameters is to just create a new character and drag in your new animator controller and then build your character and the character builder will automatically add the required parameters. You can then just delete your character and just apply this animator controller to your existing character. So with that said, let's take a closer look at how the demo scene animator controller works. And to do that, I'm gonna first start by going from top to bottom, explaining what all these different parameters are used for. These parameters, I'm probably gonna say it again, but these parameters, you may not necessarily use it in your own, uh, your own animator controller, or you may find a different use for that particular parameter, and that's great. I highly recommend customizing it to your own project. So let's go ahead and hit play and just kind of see what values change and see how it works. So right now I have a third person set up with the bow, and when I press the forward button, we're going to see this forward movement parameter that is going to change. And when I press the uh, horizontal movement value, then the horizontal movement uh, parameter is going to change. When I uh, press a combination between WASD, uh, it's just gonna keep switching between the negative one and one for depending on the strength of the button press. With a keyboard, it will always, I mean, when you're, the button is down, it's down. So it'll have a value of one or negative one. But you could have in-between values if you're using something like a controller or a joystick. Right now, I am using the combat movement type. And that's why the character can strafe. And that's also why there is a horizontal movement uh, parameter that changes. If I were to switch the character to using a adventure movement type, then you'll notice that the forward movement uh, parameter, that always just stays at one, um, no matter which direction I am, am facing. And that is just because that's the way that the adventure movement type works, because you can't actually strafe or move backwards with the uh, adventure movement type. So I'm gonna switch back to combat because that provides a little bit better example for this next set of parameters. And the next set of parameters that I'm gonna look at are the pitch and the yaw. These are the camera pitch and the camera yaw in comparison to the character's 
angle. So if I change the pitch, you'll notice how this pitch changes as well relative to the character. And then the yaw is also changing. The combat movement type will always have the character facing in the forward direction. So if I were to change really quickly, like I'm just quickly moved to the left, um, you can notice that the yaw value changes and that's just the delta value between the look direction of the camera versus the look direction of the character. The speed parameter is used uh, by the speed change ability. So I can activate the speed change ability by holding the shift key and we'll notice that that switches to a value of one. We'll also notice that the forward movement value switches to two and those uh, parameters are changed within the speed change ability. We can click on this and we can see that there's a speed parameter and that's set to one. So that's used by the param or the animator controller and that's where it's set. Um, you could also probably get the same results by um, not having this parameter at all and just comparing the horizontal or forward movement value. It's just that by having this parameter, it makes the transitions a lot more convenient because you can compare just against one parameter versus needing to compare against multiple. And these horizontal and forward movement values, you'll notice that they get doubled when I, the speed change ability is active and that comes from this speed change multiplier. multiplier. Uh, the height parameter is very similar to the speed parameter in that it's set by the height change ability. Um, and so that's where this height parameter comes from. Uh, this, so let me go into crouching pose. You can see that the height changes. The moving parameter gets changed when the character is moving on the horizontal axis. So notice he's moving right now in any direction on the horizontal axis, moving is going to be set to true. When I am just moving on the vertical axis, such as when the character is jumping, moving will not be set to true at all. And uh, this is just used to be able to tell that the character is kind of in a movement uh, position by some of the transitions and where these transitions don't necessarily care if the character is following. Um, the aiming parameter is very similar to that and it just gets selected when the aim ability is active. And these four uh, parameters in particular, you could probably get the exact same results if these parameters didn't exist and it was instead you just had to compare based on other parameters but these are kind of more i see them as convenience parameters they make your life easier when determining which transition to make this movement set id is set by the uh by the item and let's go ahead and click on the bow we can see that it has an animator movement set id of two and a good example of this is, let me go to them in the scene view. And you can see that when the character is aiming, his left hand or his left foot is stretched out in front of his right foot. And if I were to then aim the assault rifle, the feet are just kind of staying in the same position. And that is done with this movement set ID as because the movement set ID kind of determines the base set of animations that should play based on the item that is equipped. Now, for this is what worked for the demo animator controller. If you happen to be working on your new animator controller and you see that a better use for your particular use case is to kind of use this movement set ID in a completely different way, I highly recommend you do that and just kind of use it and use it as you can and use it for whatever purposes you can. It's just that this was the purpose that we found worked best for our situation with the demo animator controller. The ability index is used by the ability, scene, uh, ability system. And I'm sure that you've seen the animator controllers where they have a thousand different parameters and each one is specifies a specific state, like is jumping, is crouching, is falling, is whatever. And this is, instead of doing that, we
we have a kind of a cleaner method where we just base the character state on an index value and this index value is set on the actual ability. So let me go ahead and jump and you can see it has a value of one, then a value of two. That means that the jump ability started, the jump ability ended, the fall ability started, the fall ability ended. The fall ability has a value of two, jump has an ability of one. So we can see that this is set right here under this ability index parameter. So jump has a value of one, fall has a value of two. Not every ability uses the animator, and therefore not every ability needs to use this ability index parameter, such as Ragdoll. Ragdoll doesn't use the animator at all, so it has a value of negative one because it's not going to set the animator parameter at all. Ability change will get set when the ability index changes, and let me take a look at that within the, um, actually, I'm about to describe a, the next parameter, and I know I'm going to do that within Interact. So let's take a look at this. This is kind of a nice, clean uh, substate. So if I look at this substate, we, for this transition from the any state to press button, it has these three conditions, ability change, ability index, and ability int data. Let's ignore ability int data right now. And ability index is set to 9, and ability change is uh, is a condition as well. Ability change is a trigger that, I, as I said, will change when the ability, or will trigger when the ability index it changes. And the reason why this trigger exists is because we could be in the press button state and our ability index could still be nine and the int data could still be one, but we don't want to just keep retransitioning into press button. We want it to only transition once and because ability change will only be triggered when the ability index changes, that's why there's this uh, condition. It just prevents us from re-entering animations or states that you're already within. And that's kind of a, this condition set is a good segue into the ability int data and ability float data in that these are parameters are used by the ability system or the specific ability in whatever way they see fit. In the case of this interact ability, it uses this ability int data to specify what the character is interacting with, a button, a chest, uh, the right door or the left door. And you can see if I click on the different transitions, the only difference between the different transitions is this ability int data. So it, it changes from one, two, three, and four. And that is set by the interact ability and the interact ability will then yeah, set the animator parameter based off of whatever that ability says. So if I go to the, and I add the interact ability, first off, we'll see that it has an ability index parameter of nine. So that's where that transit, that ability int data came from. And then this ability int data value, that is the value that it can set for the animator. So if I wanted to, this to be a button interact, that's when I would set that value to be number one. Uh, the demo scene, it has four different types of interactions, and so that's why there are these four different states. So let's, we can remove that for now. Um, ability float data is very similar to ability int data in that, yeah, it's just used in whatever way the ability sees fit. I think the fall ability uses it, in it to determine the velocity of the fall. So let's go ahead and hit play again. And as we're hitting play, we can see that this item ID, it has a value of four, and slot zero item ID has a value of zero. Well, these next eight parameters are, are duplicated, except the only difference is the slot index. The slot index is the index that the item is parented to. So if we take a look at the character's rig, we currently have the bow equipped, and the bow is in the character's left hand. Um, let me just show you. So you can see the character, the character kind of has it in both hands, but he, he's really holding it, the base of the bow from his left hand. And this left hand has this items game object, and this items game object has an item slot component, and this item slot component has an ID of one. And so that's where that 
slot one came from, and that's why the four is appearing within the slot one item ID. The bow has a animator ID value of four, and that is set right there. So the slot one is, represents the character's left hand, and slot zero, which is right here, and it represents the character's right hand. This is for a third person perspective, but the first person perspective slot IDs will match. So the first person right hand will match the third person right hand. So right now I have the bow equipped in the left hand. If I were to switch, it doesn't look like it actually switched. Uh, it's done this to me before. I have to close the animator. And then if I reopen the animator, it should work. Um, but let me click on that again. And now when I switch, we should be able to see the parameters again. So yeah, so now I, I switch to the assault rifle and you'll notice that the assault rifle has a value of one. And that's because, uh, the, or the slot zero has an item ID of one and that's because the assault rifle has a animator ID value of one and it's in the zeroth slot. Animator ID of zero, of one, and it has a slot ID of zero. This item state index, that can be thought of as the ability index except for items. So notice when I'm aiming, it's going to change to a value of one. Then when I shoot, it will change to a value of two. If I reload, it changes a value of three. And all those parameter values, those are set on the item ability. So if I scroll to the item ability, you can see that aim, it has an item state index of one, then use has an item state index of two, and reload has an item state index of three. So those are the exact same parameters that matched up. Equip on equip has a, a similar situation, except it actually has four and five, because equip on equip manages both equipping and unequipping. I know that's a great name for the ability. Uh, so that's where that item state index has come from. And this uh, item state index change is a trigger similar to the ability change trigger in that it will trigger when there is a change on the item state index. And that, that again is just used within transitions just so that you're not repeating the same animation over and over and over again. This item substate index can be thought of being similar to the int data in that it's just a parameter that is set by the item ability. In the case, a good example is the use animation. Um, you'll notice that it's changing um, to, to two right now. If I'm not aiming, it changes from zero to two. If I'm aiming, it changes from one to two. And we can change that value within the shootable weapon component. And let me scroll down. Um, to shootable weapon under the use foldout. So here's use. Um, it has this animator audio state, and this animator audio state value of two is what is being set on the animator. And in the case of shootable weapons, this parameter I don't think is used at all, or at least specifically for the assault rifle, it's not used. I know it's used in other places on shootable weapons, but Probably for the assault rifle, it's not used. Um, and for melee weapons, that's where it really has a lot of use. If you saw the video on the uh, setting up melee weapons, you'll remember that I set up an animator audio state of two, three, four, and that just allowed the melee weapon to play a combo set of animations. So it's not quite as useful for uh, this assault rifle, but that kind of goes along with some of the other parameters in that you don't, you don't have to use it all the time. It's there if you need it, and it just adds a, another set of customization or extensibility to that animator controller. So these slot one item ID, item state index, that mirrors the slot zero sets of parameters just for the other hand. So we don't need to go over those next four since they're the exact same concepts. The leg index, is a curve that's controlled by the animations and that just specifies which leg is out in front first. 
I think the left, if the uh, parameter value is one, then the left leg is out in front. And if it's zero, then the right leg is in front. And this can be used by like the jump animation. So it knows that if the character is running, he should lift off of his right leg there. And, um, or he should then land on his left leg, for example. So this is a curve that is set by the animations. So that's all the parameters that are used by the character controller. And I wanted to go into one last topic, and that is important for the character controller, and that is uh, animation events. Let's go ahead and go to the jump ability, because this is a good example of it, and I think I use the same example in the documentation. But when the jump force is actually applied, it's not applied until an actual animation event because you'll see there's this jump event and wait for animation event is true. Now, if I were to jump, it's, it's a nice, it, the character doesn't jump immediately when I press the space bar. It waits until the animation plays the lifting off animation or it waits until the animator plays the lifting off animation. And that is done with this jump event or this animation event. So if we, let me stop that, and we'll go into the jump ability, we'll go into, or the jump substate, and then the jump standing substate, and this jump start animation, if we click on that, we are on the jump start clip, and we'll scroll down to the animation event, and we can see that the function name is execute event and on animator jump. Well, the jump ability is waiting for this on animator jump animation event in order to actually start applying the forces. So that's how the ability knows when to apply the force. And it's done through this animation event. If you're, for example, have a first person character that has no body, then you don't necessarily have a jump event. And what you can do instead is let me go back to my jump ability is you can just deselect wait for animation event and then it'll be based off of a timer. In this case, it's gonna fire instantly. So let me go ahead and hit play. And now when I jump, we should see the character just jumps immediately and it looks kinda of odd in a third person view because that the character still didn't look like he should actually be jumping right then. But in a first person view, that looks good because it's a much more responsive movement and you don't actually see the animation being played. So this, this uh, jump event, or these, these are called uh, event triggers, these are used throughout the character controller. And another popular use location is within the items. And there's these equip events, and there's unequip events, and there's use events, and all these also rely on animation events. Um, if you, like right now, I'm waiting on that equip event, and if you hover over the, uh, the foldout, you can see which animation event it is waiting for. So that's an easy way to determine, hey, I should add this animation event if I am going to be waiting for that animation event. Otherwise, if you just want it to be waiting on a timer to equip the item in this case, then that you can just deselect that and it will be waiting. It will be using a timer instead. Um, so hopefully this video kind of gave you a good overview in how the animator controller works by the ultimate character controller. I really hope that this helps you kind of develop your own animator controller for your own game or your own project because that, that's really where all the power is and you'll, you'll just kind of get a lot of flexibility by using that method versus just replacing a few animations within the demo animator controller.